everyone, it's Nicole here from Nikki Craft, and welcome back to another video where today you can see I am back with another, well, tutorial video. Like, a kind of tutorial go over video. Now, today what I'm going to be reviewing is pretty much Camtata, Cam, Camtata, Camtasia Studio 8. Now, a lot of people will say Camtasia, some people say Camtosia, it's not Camtosia, it's Camtasia. So, that's kind of the, just the way you say it. And, um,. Uh, pretty much what I'm going to be showing you guys is all the different tools here. Um, I'm not really going to get to cursor or gesture effects. You can go to their website for that, uh, which is techsmith.com. They're located inside of TechMith, TechSmith. So, I don't really... Th this, I, I like this part, cursor effects and some... Si like, I like this. I'll sh I might show you guys how to do that. But this it almost is useless just to me because I don't do really hardcore recording if you're like a serious recorder who literally edits like mini movies or something then you might want to use that but we're just going to be going over some simple stuff today so i just recorded a video and as you can see that's my mouse moving around over there and i would have opened up a window and i'm circling around showing my mouse stuff like that so what i'm going to be showing you guys first to start off is with media i'm just going to say media is literally the video i have here it's your audio, you can insert media by going to file, and then import, it's import, sorry. You can hit import media, media, what's the other one? From Google Drive, which you can, which a lot of people do, and then my places, which I, I don't know what that is. But you can just import anything you want. You can import audio, you can import video, you can literally import whatever you want, just anything. So I'm, I'm not gonna be going over that because I don't have anything to import. But I'm just going to start off with annotations. Now, first, what annotations is, is usually um, literally words on the screen, arrows, stuff like that. You can go to these little bars. And it's not like, no, you can't do it by the arrow button. But you can go over here. There's arrows here. There's different kinds of stuff. If you're just looking for the weirdest arrows, they have them here. They're just, they're so strange, but <laughs> they have them. They also have this, like... Um, when you try to highlight something, so say this, well, it's like that would be a good screensaver if it was just all pink. That, that would actually look really good. Um, you can have all of that together, and that that would, you know, it looks very cool if you're trying to highlight something. I've done that in the past. I usually use the yellow highlighter. They also have the green highlighter, which isn't very strong. They have the yellow, which is stronger. They have this, and then look, the, the the pink is the strongest highlighter if you wanted to use that. So let's, let's say I wanted to highlight down here. I'm not like, go there, go, 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 go there, go, go there. That's not how it would work. What you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to click, hold, and drag to the timeline down here, which I'll get to in a second. It'll also show you your layers in here. So this is layer, this is layer. Maybe maybe you don't want it visible right now, so you're gonna turn it off. Or maybe you want it on here. I'll go here. So let's say I was like, you know what? This is too much at once. I'm going to make that non-visible. It'll kind of lock it out, but it won't completely. So that you could still see that there's a layer there. Then you can also lock it so you completely... Here, let me lock it so you completely can't move it no matter what you do. So let's say, let's say you're dealing with a lot at once and you just want it to stay there. You can get it to stay there by doing that. You can unlock it but by clicking just again. On the timeline, they also have the numbers here. So say you wanted a very specific timeline, you wanted to cut perfectly, like a really, really specific time. You're going to want it at like usually the highest or the second highest level. Let's say you're like, you don't even have to edit your video at all. You're going to just put it all the way down here. It saves a lot of space and memory. So now that we've gone over annotations, we've gone over, well, actually I'll show you a little annotations after. Um, we've gone over this, we've gone over this, and this is usually where the record button would be. I don't think I have another one open, but that's where the record button would be. And then while you're doing the video, it'll say pause to stop the recording. I think since I'm recording a video right now, that's why it says pause to stop. And uh, let's say I just wanted to put my annotation down. So as I put my cursor down here, you can also move this across the timeline up onto another layer. You can also stretch it and move it if you want it for a certain amount of time it'll show you end time and duration so duration like you wanted it 26 seconds that's a long time to highlight something but say you really really wanted that you would have that so it moves a lot slower and it's not being laggy it's lit which if you don't know what that means already it's not being very glitchy 
which it looks like here. It looks very glitchy, but it's not. What it's doing is it's just trying to line up with the specific line cause, lines because it knows when you're in that mode, you're trying to be very specific with, with your cutting. So let's hit play, and as you can see down here, or no, it's not in the right spot. Um, I can click it again, I can move it to the right spot, and I can adjust it whichever way I want. And this is where my camp stage is going to be located. And then I open it, and it's at the exact time that that box would have opened that that uh, highlighter would have turned off, which is pretty cool. Like, it allows you to do stuff at the exact time you want it at. We've gone over annotations, media. We haven't gone over transitions. We've gone over the whole timeline bar. Now we can go to transitions, which is pretty cool. So let's say I wanted my highlighter not just to appear, but I wanted it when, when it appeared. So I can just kind of bounce the cursor out through here. I can right click the top. You don't really right click the middle, you right click the top. Split all at playhead. And now I have the whole playhead here. I can go back to this area. And let's say you're like, oh no, I split this area. It's literally not gonna change anything. You could split the entire video as small as you want and it won't affect the video unless you put something in between that. So let's say I wanted the transition to be and I want it to be on this. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to have it slide in slash out. And it's going to slide in. So instead of just having it regularly, it's going to... I think, did it slide out? Insert a new annotation. I'm going to get this. And I want it to like measure. That is going in the trash bin. That's all it is. And I can make this a lot shorter actually but I can add that by having that area and the transition between it so at the beginning of it it's gonna fade in slash fade out so as you can see now now it fades in there we go so I wasn't doing the right thing with the the highlighted pink but as you can see you can allow it to fade in slash fade out and you can add as many as you want well not transitions because you can only do so many transitions at once I mean you might be able to do a fade in and move from left to right at the same time but I don't know I've never tried it and let's say I wanted it to be colorized All right so oh wait I didn't, I colored the wrong thing um colorize oh wait no I colored the right thing yeah now now I'm coloring the screen so now the screen is green and if I wanted to do that, I could just drag and drop um, stuff to the videos. So as you can see, we went over media, annotations, annotations, and transitions, and um, video effects connect all the way. They just, they're like literally a web, and you can just drag and drop all the time. But you have to make sure you're doing it the right way and go over it a couple times. Otherwise, you may do the wrong thing, and your video won't come out the way you like it to. So now that you can see here... Um, we have, we, went over, we didn't go over animations. I want to go over animations with you guys. So I'm going to add in another annotation to make an animation because you can't just animate nothing. Um, you, you could animate your screen if you wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do custom because I really like custom animations the best. And custom is the one you're going to want to know the most. Now it probably shouldn't be bright green or I can just... Um, I'll show you one thing right now. So you ha you were like, oh no, I don't want my screen to be green. What you can do is show properties. You right click and show properties. And then you can just turn it off whenever you want. I think you can... No, not copy FX. I can't... I can't... I, like, I just did it before. I keep doing something wrong. But if I didn't want the colorize, I could just turn the colorize down. And... So I like that color. That's nice. And I can make it that color and it would just turn into that. That's actually a lot nicer than the original one there. So now that we have this arrow here, now we want this arrow to move across the screen. So we're going to go into animations. We're going to do custom. We're going to drag it there. And now we have a custom animation. So now we want to maybe move it over here. Because at the original spot, it's going to move your cursor over here. Because wherever your arrow was to begin with, is where your arrow is going to start off as and it's like whatever was before doesn't matter it's already going to be there what matters is where your arrow is going to go now I don't, I don't know why i'm just going to have a point here because i can and i don't know where this else this is going but let's say we were trying to measure the extent of something we can just hit play 
And as you can see, the way I moved the arrow from before, where I started to begin with, and how it, I moved it to spin it, and then I put it in the exact same spot it should be. Now it moves within time, because you can, you can move it to the spot you want it to be at, and then turn it, and it will add both of those together. It won't be like moving to the spot and now turning the arrow. It'll mesh both of the things together at the same time. So now that we've gone over pretty much everything, uh, video FX, I just wanted to say we use the colorize button over here. Um, video FX allows you to just, you could see, you could click and it'll just show you what it is. It's just like, hey, you want some extra cool stuff or something? Or interactive hotspot, which I found really cool, TechSmith, which I, I might have told you guys before, you can go to their website. Um, they have Camtasia there, you can download Camtasia there and it colorizes everything. This is just like the fun bar. It's the second most fun right next to annotations. Now uh, to audio FX. Audio FX is literally, it's just, it's boring. It's literally just your audio, but say you're, you're recording like a music video or something, your audio is gonna be really, really important and you wanted your personal captions. Maybe you would have like, sorry about that, meant to say blah 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 blah. Now you can turn um, captions on in YouTube, obviously they're pretty good, but sometimes if you say something a certain way, um, it won't catch it correctly, so if you said pineapple, it'll say shoes. You know what I mean? Like, it, it won't make any sense, but sometimes um, you just need to do it at Camtasia and turn off captions on your video and you'll have your own captions by Camtasia, which is great. They have great captions, I've tried it before. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please do leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Before we go, I just want to say that Camtasia is my all-time favorite recording system. Like, literally, they just have so many different things. And when I first got Camtasia, I, I didn't even know what to do. But they have tutorials at their site, techsmith.com. And they have, like, Camtasia and then other stuff there. You just click on Camtasia. It'll ask you the version. I, I don't know if it asks you the version, it might just bring you to the modern version. You want to make sure you're on Camtasia 8. Camtasia Studio 8, which is very important because 9 is very, very new and the setup is a little bit different. So, it, it'll look a little bit different. It's like having an Apple phone and then you get a Samsung, which I, I had. Now I have a Samsung. It's very new to me. And then eventually I was able to learn about Samsung because they have their own app that shows you what to do when you first get a Samsung phone. TechSmith does the same thing. They allow you to show what Camtasia does, and if you need any help, just ask them, and they'll help you with everything. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, so that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please do leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, goodbye.